A cornerstone of the cyberpunk aesthetic and any good city in general is a rail system and specifically subways and metros. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at some passenger rail and some of the details that I love to use to sell it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another tutorial. So yeah, today we are looking at subways and uh, before we get around to this beauty that we have behind us and also those two big boys behind me there, we have to start with the basics. And by that, I mean the actual rails. So first, we're looking at a couple of rail designs that I've thrown together. We have a monorail uh, set up here that is more elevated. So you'd be able to run it at any height that you like, elevated off of the ground. Now, the nice thing about this one is that you'd be able to actually put the stairs on the sides like this and have the train just sit on top of that or what you could do is actually take these away and have it where the rail connects up like that to the train's body now the same can be done with this one where you would have the train actually connecting up to these here and hanging down this one actually has supports that could hook up to like the sides of buildings and things like that and actually run through the skyscrapers something a little bit like this one that we had here except where it's being hooked up to the central line it would just be clipping onto the sides of the rail this one is still a good example of like a hanging monorail from our vehicles video for those of you that can remember that and then the next two that we have here are the ones that i've actually used for the trains today these are what i'm calling the ground rail sky rail ground rail right so this is your your uh typical traditional uh two rail system and uh that's what that bad boy is running on and uh, I'll show you the, the other one in a minute as well. Then we have this one here. One thing that I forgot to mention was that the way that I figured it is these daylight sensors that we have here and also there are acting as magnets, right? So think of this as like not, not exactly a mag lift, but mag, uh, magnetic propulsion sort of train where this magnet will turn on and pull and then this magnet will turn on and push. Um, and they will just continuously move along the rail like that. So that is pushing the train along so it doesn't need any of the uh, the lines of the things above it. But you can always add those sorts of details if you like. I just really like the idea of a rail system like this. And then this one's a little bit more traditional. It'll actually have an engine or it'll have some kind of powering mechanism to propel the train then before we get to the trains and the underground parts of this video it is uh, important to remember that even our metro trains will sometimes go over land and it's good to have some crossings in place so one of the first signs that i have here is just a regular crossing there is a crossing up ahead right for cars to know that trains are going to be coming and it's very basic just a banner and this one you will be able to find on my uh, Planet Minecraft page, so I will link that down in the description as well as the world download for this as usual You guys know the drill by now and uh, then the next one we have here is a more uh, fully realized uh, Crossing so we have the big boom arm using carpets for this one And then we have some invisible item frames with uh, redstone blocks in there for the lights And then a banner up at the top to show that this is a crossing Nice and simple design, really like um, the way that this one looks. But then if you want to go just slightly more advanced, if you do have access to custom player heads, then obviously lights like this would be a lot better. And then you can make some map art if you're truly dedicated, which uh, some people are. So, I mean, that there's that, right? You can make a stop sign and the actual crossing sign like this and just hang that up there. And it looks magnificent. I really like it the way that that looks and then unfortunately there's no real red bar but we do have the white so i kind of just layered this up i think it makes for a decent boom arm right so yeah crossings now for the first of our big boys and this is a bullet train or a passenger rail that we have built and it is uh yeah it's a big boy so it's got the, 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 the long nose as bullet trains have for aerodynamics and all of that. We have some player heads up at the front for headlights, but you could also just do it with signs and the like. And then I just have some like caution up at the front. And these are meant to be piping or light strips or whatever you 
uh, can imagine that to be. And then the, the piping would come out here. And there's just a whole lot of details and ventilation and some caution tape around the sides. The, the wheel mechanism down here is hoppers and grindstones um, with some signage over top of that as well. We have the number of the train itself. We also have numbers to each of the cars. So lots of, lots of details everywhere. There's also machinery and things up at the top here that you can see and some skylights. So if we go into this, then we will see that it actually has a cockpit. So this is where the driver would come and sit and he has all of his knobs and gears and things and bobs. Uh, we have some exit signs, uh, kind of a little bit of storage and all of that. And then some machinery in here that is actually running the train. Then moving into the passenger cars, this is the, the, the type with the forward facing seats, right? We also have a couple of just dining tables in the center here for the people that paid a little bit more. We also have the baggage stores up at the top. So that's that. And then there's also these um, kind of like uh, advertisements and things at the end. There's also a sign up at the front here that says what the next stop is going to be. This one is actually going to be stopping at Neo Valhan. And uh, that is pretty much the interior to this. These trains usually have very repetitive interiors and very simplistic interiors. And that is pretty much it. We also have this unique end piece to this train that I really like. Um, just just basically a, uh, a exit that, uh, you know, looks a little bit different. I don't know. I liked it. I worked off of a comp concept art and that is what I got. And we also have some taillights and a little bit of a rusty chassis at the bottom, which uh, I think works pretty well with this whole block palette. Now let's have ourselves a little look at the Metro car uh, before we actually get into the Metro over there. So we have a pilot's cockpit up front here. I'm not even going to go in there. I have some compasses and things in there that uh, can just, uh, you know, dials and gears and things like that. We got some headlights. This one's running off of the monorail sort of mag lift system that I was showing you guys before. This is also the red line. I figured having some neon strips on the side here can indicate that this is the red line of the Metro. You could use this as color coding or you can use just red blocks as color coding or you can take the whole train and make it red if you want. It's entirely up to you, but usually Metro cars are color coded in some sort of way. You can also see that I have lots of glazed terracotta everywhere because Metro cars have a tendency of getting graffitied to high hell. And then going into the inside, we have the obvious um, advertisement boards up at the top, as you guys have seen on pretty much every subway car imaginable. Then we have different seating styles. So we have the forward facing ones like this, and then we have the ones that are more sideways like that. I really like it. Then I also made a custom map that uh, is a depiction of the entire Metro um, map. So I think that is a very, very cool detail to help sell that this is a Metro car. And I've placed them on all of the windows in the center of each seating area, because if you're sitting this side, you'd want to be able to see it from there. If you're sitting on this side, you'd want to be able to see it from there. And that's pretty much the inside of it as well. Very repetitive. We also have these handlebars and we have the light strips up at the top. They all connect up to each other. This is one of those um, concertina type of uh, trains that uh, are just continuous, no doors in between. They just, uh, yeah, they, they just bend and retract as need be in, in between all of the cars. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole train, just a repetition of that. And then what I did here at the end is just put on like a capping piece. I'm not 100% sure how these trains usually end. I'm pretty sure that it's just that there's a, this one specific car that just doesn't have a back. But I think it's a, it's a smart idea and maybe something they think of in the future if they haven't already. Listen, I'm not a train expert, okay? I'm just saying, I'm just, just putting that out there. Um, to just have like a capping piece that you could just smack onto the back of it and then boom, it's closed. I think that's a, a, a very good system. I don't know if that's how it works, but that's what I'm going with. Now that the rambling about the trains are over, let us get into the actual metro station. Now, there are a lot of details to cover in this area, so we're going to take it step by step. Follow me. So the first thing that we see is that there's a big caution thing here, right? Something that you would see in a lot of uh, train stations. 
and especially at a cyberpunk setting where there's always some kind of construction or something going on this one's just showing that this this pretty much ends right here you're gonna fall off you're gonna break a leg and uh that's that we also have some bins everywhere so you'll see those um and then we have ticket machines right so signs that say ticket machine we have the keypads we have some light strips we have player heads and the one on this side has banners uh, for screens so uh yeah there's two different versions there's the data pack e version and then there's the vanilla version we also have the slippery when wet floor sign with the player head for a uh, mop bucket um don't really need the mop bucket to sell this the the slippery when wet sign is good enough we also have loads of billboards you'll see them everywhere these ones you could imagine to be screens instead of billboards but these ones i would imagine are just big billboards and then we have this beautiful sign that says pay the fare or pay the price definitely dystopian uh getting some good dystopian vibes from that uh you can read into that as much as you want then there's more signs this one saying next train red line west downtown uh neo valhan and then some times for when they will be arriving but looking down this is probably my favorite detail of the entire station it is a holographic uh metro map right so we have the base uh just here with some levers underneath to set up the trap doors and then using the armor stand data uh data pack for the book uh you can actually lock item frames and if you lock them you'd be able to take the block out from behind them and i've just set this up so that we have basically two item frames um, back to back on each other with in uh, with transparent maps of the metro map and it is an awesome little design i can't stop looking at it we also have some benches over here we have piping up on the ceiling just running into all of the other things we have a hologram here that is spinning and just advertising more things because you know dystopia sell 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 ultra capitalism sweet and here we have an information booth and you can also see the name of the station belville station right so here we have the information person doing as they usually do ignoring you and just walking around on countertops don't look at me now like you want to actually help uh more maps and uh yeah that is the the, the entrance part of the station then once you've purchased your ticket at the ticket machine you usually have to go through a turnstile like this one right so in this case you kind of just walk through this is not one of those that just open up if you have the ticket on you it will scan and you it will know that you have paid your ticket uh, and if it doesn't it'll go and then you will pay the price uh, whatever that means. I haven't put any guards in here, but you can get the idea, right? This is the exit only side. So if you come on this side, you'll see that uh, that is the enter and that is exit only. We also have some caution um, uh, lines here to say that this is where you have to kind of wait uh, before you can go through. And we also have a red line on the floor to indicate that this is where you're going to be going for the red line. Let's say that there's a different colored line through that door over there like the green line maybe right this line here is over that way then there might be also a green line going that way but this one showing that if we go down here we're going to get to the red line we have some um themed walls which is something that uh metro stations love to do um so this is again red line and then coming down here we have more of these signs we have benches we also have lots of vending machines there's one over there as well um, a new type of vending machine style. I know you guys love your vending machines from me. So this one's just a slightly different design to the ones I've done before. But it's still Vent Corp snacks. And we have the keypad over there. More bins, benches, pipes. We have the name of the station so that anyone that's getting on and off will be able to see. Oh yeah, this is Belleville. Belleville station. I should probably get off here, right? We have the caution tape. Like, mind the gap. Please stand behind the line. Be careful. The train's going to run you over. And then we also have the magenta arrows to show us where the doors are going to be. Because you see that nowadays in a lot of metro stations where the trains will stop at exactly the same space every time. And you, people can line up before the doors even open, right? Then one last detail that I think is very important is food stalls, right? Always with the food. Come on. 
who doesn't love a little snackage at the train station, right? Now you could have this up at the top there uh, before you pay, or you could have it down here like some train stations do. In this case, we've actually built ourselves a subway. Ha ha, subway, woo. And then there we have a subway employee here with the death in his eyes. You can see that he just doesn't, doesn't care anymore. He doesn't, he doesn't care. He doesn't care, he doesn't even react. But yeah, you can sit here, you got your prices, you got some menu items and things like that, and boom, that is the subway. And because of capitalism, we have more uh, advertisements up at the top there, because anyone sitting, you know, on this side over here should see advertisements. You should always have advertisements in your view. And then also just again, the times and what train is next. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the details. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to try your hand at air travel instead of rail, check out this video on the screen right now. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic day and see ya.